It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, guys, to a tutorial slash mini series where we're going to show you how to hold back the Soviets in the Winter War as glorious Finland. Oh, Finland. What a country. So I have already played this before. I did a little test run to see how the best method of holding back the Soviets was to try and find the optimal way of doing it for you guys, okay? So I'm going to play, I'm going to kind of talk at the same time as well, and I'll kind of give you my thought process with everything that I'm, everything that I'm doing. Yep, so here we go. So first of all, I want to focus on two equipment. Infantry weapons, which is pretty good, which is my main gun for the whole game. And also support equipment, which is going to give me engineers, which give me more entrenchment. And more entrenchment equates to um, more defense, therefore defense holds them back. We've got three divisions, pretty much infantry with engineer, small infantry with engineer, and horse with reconnaissance. At the end of the day, we are going to be better off with standard infantry. The bigger the better. And also with engineers. One of the issues with Finland you get is you do start off with a lot of divisions. Which is good. But the problem is a lot of them are very, very, very low strength. And you have trouble with manpower. So therefore you can't have full strength divisions. Which is a big issue. So to make up for that we're going to go fascist. And therefore we can get the extra manpower from extensive conscription. Which democracies can't do that unless they're at war. And if the Soviets declare on war on you it's already too late anyway. So in that case you're better off going for extensive as soon as possible. Yeah, that seems good to me. You also get, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Saisu, which reduces attrition, recovery rate, massive boost of 25%, attack and defense 20%. Awesome. So in that case, you don't want to be attacking. It's very tempting to be on the border with the Soviets and attack them. Do not do that. Trust me, don't do that. You're going to end up getting destroyed because remember, you're not going to get the benefit of this bonus. Uh, this one, there you go. So, in all fairness, you want to be defending, and uh, there is an optimal way of doing it. And as I play this video, I will explain what I'm doing to show you what to do. So, I mean, I could make a full-blown series out of this if you guys really desperately want it. And I don't mind doing it if you guys really want to. Uh, but, I don't know. For, for the time being, it'll make a nice little, little small tutorial kind of video just for the purpose of showing you guys what to do. You get two generals at the start. Oh, let me just go for construction effort. You get Eric, and you also get uh, Vaiho? Vaiho Peter? One of them is a lot better than the other. Um, the guy, This guy's good because he's a ranger. Uh, so you get extra defense in forest, which is very, very, very good. I've gone for concent Concentrated. The reason why is because we're not going to be switching out our lines that much. We are going to be focusing primarily... We are going to be focusing primarily on on keeping the same equipment that we start the game with, uh, aka weapons one or or whatnot. So we've got extra PP, which I think we're going to go for military theorists. We need that extra political power, extra construction. Going to start exercising. Going to get Eric on the go. We want to move on to a few things. I mean. We've got like, it's almost like we've got like primary focus and kind of secondary focus. And the main primary focus is to get out our, in, our divisions so we can cover our front line and hold them back. And there are a few other little things that we will focus on as well, such as anti-tank as well as anti-air as well. We're going to make a few civilian factories as well. Not that many, just a few, just to kind of gear our economy a little bit quicker. I'm getting the one military factory so we can produce guns a little bit quicker. And then the extra civilian factory will snowball our economy just a wee bit. So as you can see, the industry to start with is pretty horrific. So I'm trying to make the most of a bad situation. Going to get our navy here on escort. It doesn't really matter. We're going to lose our navy. You could disband the navy to get a bit of manpower. It's really not worth it. In all fairness, you are going to be importing a wee bit of steel. So holding this area with your ships to escort the, the convoys is going to be a good idea. Because I think the Soviet fleet here is a little bit larger than yours, so they can take you on. So it's not a good idea to try and fight them toe for toe. I'm going to train a new division. Just give it a few moments to get these guys a little bit higher strength. Burning a little bit of uh, equipment to get some exercise points, which I think is worth it for the time being. Because we are going to modify this template a wee bit. So we are going to go fascist. The reason we're going fascism is because it gets extra manpower. 
which is for two reasons. One, to go for extensive early, because democracies can't go for extensive or non-aligned um, until they're at war, which if the Soviets have declared war on you, it's already too late. Doesn't matter what you go for the anti common term pact. I guess it makes the, uh, the Germans a little bit happy. And also, as well, you get to go for militarism as well as military youth, which I think are the most broken national focuses in the game. They are so incredibly strong. So there we go. Populism, 30%. We are moving towards fascism. Um, we need to go for commandos, too, which we will explain a little, wee bit later as well. Um, I wonder if I should go for this now or just wait, because I have got the extra PP. I'm kind of hoping I switch to fascism really quickly, because that'll help me pump out as many divisions as possible, but we'll see. I also want to focus when I've got the extra... Oh, there we go! We got a really quick switch. Wow! I didn't expect that. Okay, I really regret going for that commando dude now. Alright, so we've gone for that. That's good. Let's stop for a moment. So... Artillery is going to be useful, but that's a secondary focus. Now, we do want Grand Battle Plan because we want the extra entrenchment. When it comes down to it, the first three and the first four here do have a lot of organization and defensive bonuses. But when it comes down to it, Grand Battle Plan initially gives the biggest bonuses to defense. So, well, it's, it's not actually the defense because I think defense is higher with um, superior firepower because that's 20% boost here. The bonus is the extra entrenchment, which just is just OP. Entrenchment is really strong. And anyway, what we're doing again. So we are going to focus on planes too. But yet again, that's going to be a secondary focus as well. I'm trying to think what we could go for at this moment in time. Yeah, I think it's going to be the battle plan. Let's go. So we've switched out to fascism, which we've switched. In, we've got incredibly lucky and switched at an amazing rate. So we need to switch out to partial as soon as possible to get that economy ro 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 rolling. Uh, I guess the equipment could be useful, but at this point in time, it's not that essential. We're going to go for anti-air, because that gives us some piercing, and it's also dirty cheap, just using steel. And this point as well, it's kind of difficult to know where to go, really. Um, we, are, we are maybe going to focus on artillery if we've got the extra points, but I don't think we will, so it's not likely. I guess support equipment just for now. I can't really think of anything else. I guess, no, actually, I'll take that back. Maybe if we go for... Um, the early computing machine, that'll be good, because that'll give us an ability to kind of get that a little bit ahead of time for our science tech. We don't need the extra research slot at this moment in time, so we're going to get the extra three military factories. So we've gone for partial mobilization. This is going to jumpstart our economy a wee bit. I think I'm going to go for an extra uh, civvy factory there, and then a few extra military factories there. As you can probably see, I am focusing a lot on my industry in the south. One, that's a good thing because the high infrastructure. But two, there is another reason, which you will find out later. A little bit later. Here we go. First factory. Boom. That economy is booming now. We are now pumping out Nokias at a ridiculous rate. I was about to say Ikea then at the beginning. With I'm getting Ikea mixed up with Nokia. Oh my god, the Swedes. Tell me how angry you are in the comments right now, Swedes. All right, military factory, good. Another military factory. This is going to really jumpstart our economy for producing uh, guns. 20% reduction. I am tempted to import a wee bit now. I'm tempted, but I don't think I am just yet. Anti-air is done. That's good. Go for the support equipment, which we were going to research at some point or another anyway, so we'll go for it now. Okay, we definitely need to go for extensive now because we need that manpower. And you can see it's burning away instantly as we're training more dudes. All right, let's stop exercising now. Let's uh, make sure we get all the guns that we need. Yep, we're almost catched up anyway. So right now, this is this, this is a turning point. This is where we're going to make our armed forces a wee... I say a wee bit stronger. It's going to be a lot stronger. Military fight effort. That's good. Actually, now I think about it, this one will be a good one. Secret weapons, too. Once we've researched computer machine, we'll go for secret weapons, and that'll get us the encryption decryption text very, very quickly. Yeah. So, we're getting doctrines research quickly is going to be a good idea. Extra search slot is always good, but then again, militarism, military youth is just ridiculously strong. Trench warfare. Good. We've got all our guns sorted now, so we're going to split the, uh, the military tech up a wee bit. Balance the budget. 
We're also going to make an anti-air too. Slowly, truly creep up that tech. Okay, so at this point in time, I think Collectivist Ethos is going to be a winner. Yeah, I think Collectivism is going to be the thing for right now. I am actually kind of tempted to go for the plain tech, so we can start... <sighs> It's such a, a focus that I feel like I don't want to focus on too much because it's just not going to help me that much. The reason I want to go for planes is that they can't reduce my defense by getting air superiority. And if they're reducing my defense, it's, effect it's affecting their ability to push into me more aggressively. So I just don't... I want to... For any possibility of, of them getting an extra head on my defense by reducing it, I don't want that to happen. So that's the reason why I go for that. We're going to go for radio. Radio is something you always have to go for, so I'm just going to take it now. All right, okay, so... I'm so tempted to make this division bigger, but I just can't at this moment in time. Probably should split and divide our research a wee bit again. How far are we behind on steel? So we might want to get an extra bit of steel, which we are going to get that from the United States. Doesn't really matter who you get it from, to be honest with you. So the reason why I've assigned only one factory, and you probably think the production of this is not that great, well, what's happening is the production efficiency is going up. So it will get to the stage that one factory will be producing an unbelievably awesome amount of equipment to say it's just one factory. So the future investment is definitely worth it. Okay, let's just stop for a second. So I realize that we are researching something that we desperately need, and I totally forgot about it. That's why I was pausing for a moment, thinking about there's something I'm missing, and it's Marines. So you're thinking to yourself, why are you researching Marines, guys? Well, they don't have an infantry specialist or expert or genius for, this, for the finish. So you've got to go for commandos to get the maximum bonuses. And Marines are kind of cool, too, because they give an extra defensive bonus behind rivers. I don't think there are any marshes. I don't think there are any marshes. I'm not sure... There's a lake, forests, just like forests and plains. Actually, there's not that many plains, it's mainly forests. There's a few forests in the south. We also get a defensive guy. He's a genius. So remember, it goes specialist, expert, genius. Genius is the very best one. I also got the best stats. There's no reason why you shouldn't get this guy. And 15% defense is insane, which stacks with Saisu. So you're going to get an extra 40% extra attack. Wait, that doesn't make sense. No, it's 35 extra percent attack. Uh, military factories. So I guess we can get a few more here. I feel like I want to get one more civvy and more military. Yeah, does that seem right? That seems good. Militarism is OP. Struggling to produce our extra divisions here because of the support equipment. So I think I'm going to deploy this guy early. Just so we've got him there in the background. And we are catching up. I've got to make sure I balance my budget here because otherwise things are going to go really wrong. Otherwise, reduction are here. The penalty is 15%. That's actually not too bad. Five steel, five aluminium. I can deal with that. War economy. So now we have got an extra. It's actually just eight. So it was not. That, it, we gone from. I think it was like three to six to eight. So I guess that's not too bad. It's definitely true though. We don't need any more civilian factories. So we need to focus primarily on military now. You have got a lot of time to play with this, as Finland. So you've got lots of preparation. So. Officially, the Winter War didn't happen until 1940. I think it was early 1940. March 1940, I think, maybe? I'm not sure. So you've got lots of time to plan for this. The AI is kind of weird. It doesn't attack historically on historical at the time you expect. It sometimes does it late. Well, it might, in that, in that respect, it might actually do it early sometimes as well, so... There you go, pumping out that equipment. I think I'm going to sign one more again. I think I'm going to stick that to the top as well, because that's something we have to primary focus on. So the equipment is prioritized for the support. We've got Marines done. We will focus on getting better Marines. We also get better engineers too. 
I'm trying to think what's the best thing. I think probably focusing on my industry first is a good idea. Because we've got this period right now of peace. We can kind of be reactive when we need to be. So in this case, oh, I should have gone for captain of industry as well. It's a bit late now, but whatever. There we go. We've got nine production, which I think is pretty damn good. I think we've got ten because we're trading out one, aren't we? So, uh, Secret weapons? Yep. Secret weapons on the generic focus tree is very strong. Four reductions of electronics, nuclear technology, and rocketry. A reduction of 50%. That is just so strong. All right, guys. We can really pump the divisions out now. That's epic. Can we? Yeah, we need to get as many as we can. And seeing as we've got the loads of excess manpower, it's, there's no reason why we shouldn't, really. Oh my god, look at all these nat natural spirits. Fascism has well and truly taken hold in Finland. Alright. What else do we need? These guys, no. I guess dropping down to limited exports might be a good idea at some point, just to hold on to our steel. The resources you start with are pretty abysmal, to be honest with you. Secret weapons is now done. I think... Do we need the research slot? I think we'll just take it. I think there's a few things that we could research ahead of time that might help us out. So I think that's probably going to be a good thing for the long run. We'll focus on the industry too. So when it comes down to it, these three pieces of equipment are probably what we're going to use for the full game. So concentrated industry is definitely a winner in this case. Ah, <gasps> we now have got lots and lots of finished divisions. We will exercise a wee bit too, just to get a few of these greens into the red. No, no, it's uh, trained. I don't know why they're called greens. Does anyone know the reason why? Drop in the comments below, guys. Remember, if you want more of these kind of tutorial style series, you do enjoy this kind of content. I feel like for the most part, people don't actually enjoy this. So if you do enjoy this, you want more of it, drop us a comment and like this video. That would be great. So what's confusing is we have uh, two army regroupers, which reduce division organization. Now, I don't even know if they stack. I just don't know. But at some point, I might get them both. I don't know. We'll see. Division recovery rate is actually very, very good as well for defending. I think we'll just sit on the political power for now. Because there's nothing I desperately need. Nah, industry actually. I don't usually go for that one. But right now, as soon as we want that extra industry to just to squeeze it out, it is going to be worthwhile. Alright, pump those guys out. There we go. A bit behind on the weapons now, but it's all good. It's all good, it's all good. Okay, that's up to date now. Pallet militarism reduces research time, uh, trading time, which is decent, but not that great. Ah, okay. So this is actually really good. So this improves defense on core territory by 10%. I actually forgot about this. I, I, I want to go for that because that's going to give us a further extra defense buff. There's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't do that. Engineers need to be maxed out because that gives extra entrenchment bonus. Extra defense is a good idea. Lost the effect of the reign of terror. It's also really tempting here when the war gets declared to push into Leningrad, but Leningrad has got forts. Oh no, it's only got coastal forts. But it has got a high defense because it is urban, so it's it's tempting, but you shouldn't do it. You really, really, really shouldn't do it. One, two, what? One, two, three, four. All right, here we go. So first of all, we have forts here. So there's one behind a river with a fort. Sorry, there's two. There's, sorry, there's two few things. Bunkers, which increase defense. You've got forests, which increase defense, and you've got behind a river here, which gives it further defense. So this is a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Stick these guys here. Win, 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 win. Okay, so that's done. Gonna for advance. What was that called? Advance machine tools. Better spanners. So you see increasing their entrenchment here, which is good news. Okay, so you're asking me now, Dave, how are you going to defend against the Soviets? So the ideal way to defend against the Soviets is to find spots where you can kind of choke them off. 
And in this case, there are a few areas which are perfect. I'm trying to recall where they are now, I think. Oh, this is plains. It looks like forest, but it's not. Eep. Okay. I think this is the ideal way of doing it. I'm not 100% sure. I think that's it. I'm going to railroad them all as far away as possible so that way they'll railroad back. No, they've, no, they've not. <laughs> okay. All right, that was stupid. Okay, let's just railroad forward. All right. Uh, okay, so we've got extra production now. Um, we could focus on more military factories, but I think increasing the, the forts is probably going to be an ideal thing to do. Now, this is pretty good here in the north because you've got forest and a river. So building forts here gets the max bang for your buck. People really like it when I say that. Bang for your buck. Bang for your buck. People get a thrill out of that, you know? I, I think this is what we want. For some reason, this isn't working. And I think I might know the reason why. Let's just see if they organize again, because I might have to draw the front lines one by one. Yep, the AI doesn't understand. Does not compute. Okay, so the first front line is here. Straightforward. The next one, I think, is best here. Yep. You can kind of just draw it yourself to get an idea. I think as well, you could probably do this. And then this. I don't know why I selected that other guy. Oh shit. No, I'm not gonna do that. That looks about right. Right? Go here. So you can kind of see where the front lines need to be drawn. So in this circumstance, probably holding these two, because they can gang up on this one here. Mm. All right, I don't know how I feel about that. Let's see how this looks. So it looks like the AI has got a bit confused. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, and I built the forts here. Okay. <laughs> What's this? There's a miscommunication, gents. They don't understand the plans, all right? All right extra divisions here and go here. It looks like I'm going to have actually a lot more divisions than I initially planned. So in this case, I think it might be a good idea to focus on the planes. So engineers, that's good. So when you're done, you're going to go for planes. I think I might be overproducing now as well because I realize we're going to have probably too many divisions. Let's produce eight. I'm going to go for the three. And uh, steel-wise, we desperately need more. I'm going to get an extra one extra division. There's a lot of troops dense, condensely packed here. This is a hazard. Because I think this is a little bit too far forward. Because what they can do here is attack from multiple angles. And when you attack from multiple angles, it increases the combat width. So they can concentrate lots of firepower into one area. So in all fairness... One, two, three. One, two, three. A bit on the fence with that one. I'm trying to see if there's any gaps. I don't think there is. No, there's not. I think I'm pleasantly surprised with that, actually. I think that actually works out quite well. So building up the forts here, that's good. So what we're trying to do is decrease the surface area for the Soviets to attack into. And by connecting... Hmm, maybe we should have done this one here and this one here. Alright, okay, I feel like there's a slight change of plan coming up here. So you can continue doing that. These forts can still be used. I mean, this is not a waste of time. I just feel like maybe... Maybe that's the right way of doing it. Does that seem about right? Yeah, they can still go over here. So 
So this spot isn't essential. Okay. Political ideological fanaticism is done. The unity is okay, I suppose. There's nothing I think I need here. So I think we're going to go for the doctrines boosts. Give us that extra bit of attack. Um, we could add reconnaissance. We definitely need radios. We'll do the radio. Uh, we're going to go for the division recovery genius. So that's definitely required. That's required. That guy is not required. So this is a bad spot here. So this spot's a dud. This is a dud too. So this could be split into two bits. Yeah, okay. I get it now. I get it. Alright, we're on, we're on to a winner now, boys. And then there's a bit here. Actually, I don't think this one's required, is it? No, it's not. There you go. It's kind of hard to make out with the terrain in this game a wee bit. So you kind of get a little bit, a wee bit confused. So here and here, and then here, here and here. We'll just do the bits that we think is needed right this moment, and then we'll work on other bits. And there's this one here too as well. Ideally when the war kicks off. Oh, there's this one too. Fuck. Ah, oh, you can't go around, so okay, that makes sense. Alright, that's fine. So there's just this one more here. Trust me, if the AI sees a gap in your defenses, it will go for it. The AI is actually pretty smart with that. The holes that you can't see, the AI will take advantage of. Them holes. Alright, what are we doing? So, the encryption decryption is quite decent too. We will possibly, maybe, kind of, will do it. Um, but yet again, focus on these primary techs first is probably going to be the best idea. So we anti-air is kind of useful, but not too essential because it gives us extra piercing, which is, eh, I suppose, okay. Actually, I don't know. Now I'm starting to think about it. I think going for the battery anti-air is going to be worthwhile because this one doesn't give a lot of piercing. It's only 25, but this one's 60. So this one, now I think about it, is going to be more tuned for when the Soviets do arrive. Hmm... Alright, we need to wait for that plane. I'm not sure if I want to make these. I might want to wait for the next model. I'm not sure. Is there a national focus we can do? No, it's this one. It's a shame that this one is so useless. Experience, air doctrine, and air bases. Like, ah, so pathetic. But then these are the ones you really want to go for. To keep that, They're the ones that really jumpstart your air industry. Um, I'm going to go for the guns, which we probably won't need. So, no, we will need them, but we... We're probably not going to use them that much initially. Rip right behind on the steel, which is something I can live with. More doctrine again. How far are we on the doctrine? That's fine. Poland's joined the Allies. Germany has declared war on Poland. The war has begun, gentlemen. It has begun. All right. Extra divisions go here. Focus on reinforcements. We're up to date on all of our weaponry now. We still need to build up a bit of a surplus, though. I don't want to make more than uh, we, I feel comfortable with. Because so we need to sit on a bit of manpower. We need to sit on, on some guns as well. It's. I think what we'll do, too, is have a reserve army that's just going to sit in the back. Oh, look at that guy. Look at that dude. So this is going to be our reserve army that's going to sit in the back. I don't think I'm going to give them names. I don't think I need to, no. No template for Toad Antier. Oh, I've not added the anti-air on, have I? Ooh, I forgot to do that. Have I got enough... Have I got enough anti-air to do this? Anti-air... Piercing... No, I've not, but we'll do it anyway. Okay, I think I may have misjudged the timings a wee bit on this, but I think there's still a lot of time to catch up. 
All right, okay, so we can see where we're going to be holding. So this is a bit of a waste, but it's okay. It's okay for now. It's okay. It's all good. I'm a bit nervous about those central bits. We'll wait for this military factory to finish. The USSR occupies eastern Poland. It's on, boys. It is on. Almost done. Boom. Alright, go to the bottom. Okay, so air superiority guy is nice. But when it comes down to it, is that even going to benefit that much? Not really. So you've got infiltration and you've got assault. Infiltration is the better one because it gives you more stat boosts for your individual troops, where assault gives you more planning bonus, which we're not going to be using planning bonus because mostly we're going to be defending anyway, so this is the winner. Plus the supply consumption and night attack bonus is actually pretty sweet too. I think it might be a good idea to make the divisions bigger, maybe. Hmm, I don't know. I think we'll go for the standard 10 combat width. This is going to give us a lot of guns back. Here it is. So in that case, we need to be focusing on our anti air a little bit more. There we go. We've got ten, almost 10,000 guns, so that's a lot of surplus weaponry. So that keeps us hold out for a, a very, very long time. Okay, I didn't really think this was going to run on this long. But I've decided I'm going to split this into two. So if you guys have enjoyed this, remember to like and subscribe. Drop us a comment below. And I'll resume the second part of this on when it's released. <laughs> Have a good day.